Hey guys, my name is X Factor. Hopefully you're having a great day and this video is long overdue. Today I'm going to be breaking down and identifying some of the reasons why Battlefield 1 is the most casual battlefield that I've played today, not just in gameplay mechanics, but the actual gunplay. For those of you who do not know me, I played a ton in the Battlefield franchise. Really cranking up the hours in Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, and as you can see my stats in the bottom right, Battlefield 1. I played a ton, and for those of you who do not know my play style, it's take out positions of power, flank, and live, eat, and breathe the objective. That's why my score per minute is so high. I really don't care about dying as long as I'm capping the flag, taking out the bad guys on the flag to work that ratio in our team's favor, and of course, get back to any flag that is flashing, whether it's conquest or operations or any other game mode there. You see me trying to wipe out a little flank here. And for those of you who do not remember, Battlefield 1's already seen a balanced pass on weapons and vehicles, and we're slated for a monster of a patch in February. More than likely, more balance on weapons and vehicles, along with a bunch of bug squishing. It's my belief that balancing is extremely hard to do, and it's something that constantly needs to be tweaked depending on the current state of the game. So let's talk about the first issue in Battlefield 1, and that's accuracy and precision. And here's a little chart if you need to come back and reference it. A lot of times there is accuracy in Battlefield 1, but there's very low precision, which when we compare it to previous Battlefield titles is a bit different. So where you can be precise with a sniper rifle or a bipod LMG as long as you're not suppressed, it's really hard to be precise with other weapons. So let's go back to Battlefield 3, where it's a little bit different. You could be precise and accurate. Take a look at some of the headshot kill ratios of my weapons as highlighted with the green HK percent. The headshot kill ratio is actually higher than my overall accuracy. Aim for the head, hit the head. Aim small, miss small. You can actually go all the way down to the AK-74 where it's almost equal with headshot ratio and of course accuracy. Remember, these are headshot kills, so if you hit them first in the head, it doesn't drop them and land two more body shots and that drops them, it doesn't count. It's only if the killing blow in the head was enough to take them down. So all those headshots you'd hit early simply wouldn't count for that stat. That was accounted for in another stat. So with micro bursting and of course tap firing and bursting properly with various weapons, not strafing around in Battlefield 3, it was pretty easy to be precise and both accurate. But remember, the recoil mechanic was different in Battlefield 3. When you counter recoil in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1, you simply pull the mouse down. When you're done countering the recoil, your crosshair stays where it was. Your mouse is more than likely, if you're using an LMG, at the bottom of your mouse pad. In Battlefield 3, you actually had to bring the crosshair back up to center. That's why it was also a lot more fun to use an LMG in Battlefield 3 because you were constantly bringing your mouse back up to the middle of the mouse pad. There was an added element to the skill gap in the gunplay in Battlefield 3. So how about Battlefield 4? As you can see, some of my headshot kill ratios are higher than the overall accuracy, and some of them are a little bit lower. And remember, in the Battlefield franchise, it's all about your player movement. There are penalties to moving and shooting, whether you're hip firing and dancing, or if you're aiming down sight and strafing, whether you're bursting, micro bursting, or tap firing. The best way to be the most accurate and precise in the Battlefield franchise in the previous games is stand still, ADS, and tap or burst fire properly, with micro bursting being a big part of the Battlefield franchise in Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, and Battlefield 4. That's something DICE has done away with with much, much longer recovery times in Battlefield 1. Another thing is they've made a lot of the weapons feel unique particularly because of the paper, rock, scissor gunplay when it comes to effective ranges of various weapons and weapon classes in Battlefield 1. 
So, what's Battlefield 1 look like when it comes to headshot kill ratios? Nowhere close to what it was in BF3 and BF4. But again, we do not have the variety of weapons that we had in previous games when it comes to semi and full autos. So this is a limited list because I do a ton of sniping. Again, it's what I feel most effective as or playing assault. So does the trend continue in Battlefield 1? Absolutely not. Let's talk about the fully automatic weapons, the 1918 Storm. Then, of course, the 1918 Trench is my primary go-to when stuff is hitting the fans or tanks need to be busted. Now, you can see we've got an accuracy column where I'm shooting 24% and, of course, 23%. And the headshot kills are total. There is no percent. But the Storm is 9% headshot kill ratio. The Trench is an 11% headshot kill ratio. And then we can see some of my go-to revolvers, the number three at the bottom, floating right around 10% for headshot kill ratios. And this is a direct result of the precision not being so hot in Battlefield 1. Yes, the accuracy is there. You can hit body shots and chest shots for days. But remember, you cannot microburst in this game. You can tap fire, but with the damage fall off of the LMGs and SMGs, it simply doesn't make sense. You simply hold mouse button one, and compared to previous Battlefield titles, you wait a little bit longer and hold mouse button one again. Doesn't matter if it's an SMG or LMG, and remember, LMGs get more accurate in general the longer you hold mouse button one, only stopping to basically control your cooldown or if you have to reload. They have tweaked the LMGs, more than likely they might tweak them again, but we will see. If you're bipoded, that's when you can be precise, or if you're sniping and not suppressed, which we'll cover here in a couple seconds. Which brings us to my next point, what happened to the skill cannons dice? In previous Battlefield titles, I love the Magnum and the Deagle. Yes, was Deagle 1.0 overkill? Absolutely. But I'm a firm believer that there should always be one or two weapons, hand cannons in the game. When you give up rate of fire, you give up reload time. If it hits them in the head, they're simply dead. Not across the map, but it would be nice within 30 or 20 feet. High risk, high reward, give you a reason to aim down sight. Right now, there really is no reason to aim down sight because the precision is pretty poor and the damage model in the head is lacking. Some of the revolvers with the slower rate of fires and reload times do about 90 damage if you could smell what type of shampoo that player used that day or if they're using some breath mints. Outside of that, there is a massive damage fall off as in pistols do less than 10 damage in the body. Another decision that DICE has made. I'd love to see a little bit of the precision return with an increase in the headshot damage with giving back some of the rate of fire that of course reload time again bring back the skill cannons the next topic of the most controversial in the battlefield franchise since its inception in battlefield 3 is suppression for those of you who do not know this has been tweaked in previous battlefield games including being pretty darn good in battlefield 4 at the end but coming back with vengeance in battlefield 1 what exactly is suppression well if you're shot at, at anything but close range an LMG with one bullet or several rounds depending on what type of class of weapon is being used the following things happen if you're using an optics on a medic or sniper rifle it's more easily seen is the flinch of course it affects all weapons in the game but you get kicked off of your target the next thing is you get random optic sway and this continues until you're unsuppressed you also get added recoil an added random bullet deviation. Remember that accuracy and precision talk we just had? Well, this is in addition to the low precision available in Battlefield 1 right now. And of course, your screen blurs and darkens. As long as you're being shot at, that continues. Now, if you're in close quarters and the other player is in close quarters, you're not suppressed. But the problem with Battlefield 1 right now is a lot of times snipers stay in the uncap. They might not be hitting you or the LMGs aren't hitting you, but that one bullet goes whizzing by your head and you are suppressed. It really affects those who play the objective because you're putting your neck on the line. Everybody can take 
pop shots at you, keep your suppress really affecting your shot. And it is really cranked up for Battlefield 1. Battlefield 3 saw several buffs, including Suppression 3.0, which was absolutely crazy. Then they nerfed it. Battlefield 4 saw several adjustments, including the community working together to perfect this to the community's approval. It was great at the end of Battlefield 4, but they decided to juice it again in Battlefield 1, and it's absolutely nuts. If this gets tweaked towards Battlefield 4 settings or reworked, that brings back a skill gap in the gunplay because it becomes about the skill of the gunfighter and their precision and accuracy, not some random variables affecting your shot at any given moment in time. The next thing I want to address is grenade spam and gas spam. More than likely, DICE is on this one. Again, if you PTFO, live, eat, and breathe objective, you are huffing gas and grenades all day. One of the problem is the power of the grenades, the power of the gas compared to previous battlefields. It's pretty crazy, but the underlying problem is the amount of time it takes to reload a grenade. How about a couple of seconds? If you're a support player, your grenades are always up as you can recoup them between three and five seconds as long as you're throwing bags and running as you do. And of course, friendly gas. It gives you full suppression the second you touch it up to five to six seconds after you're out of the cloud for all those people throwing gas at our friendlies at the objective. You're actually hurting your teammates who more than likely are trying to do the same thing as you, which is kill the bad guy and not get mowed. So what are your thoughts on the current state of the casualness of Battlefield 1? What do you think about the gunplay, the accuracy versus precision comments, then of course the grenade spam, and of course suppression? Let your voice be heard in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, hanging out, and we'll see you guys soon.